Hello everyone, I am going to make a presentation on safety instrumental system loop, sys loop. This topic is on basics of sys final control elements. The video is being taken on behalf of instrumentationtools.com and automationcommunity.com. Kindly watch and subscribe to the channel. What are sys final control elements? Sys final control elements are the protecting device that saves the plant from potential hazards, if any. In the process industries, the most common final element is a remote actuated valve. This assembly usually consists of a pneumatic control assembly, an actuator and an on-off valve. The control assembly may be as simple as a three-way solenoid, a small partial valve stroke box, or complex electro-pneumatic assembly with solenoids, pneumatic booster lace and quick exhaust valves. Here in the picture we are seeing a typical picture of a on-off valve. This is a valve, valve port, and it is uh, assembled with an actuator, a spring return actuator and it is getting, uh, we are having other pneumatic components fitted into the valve assembly. All this Complete setup is known as on off wall, on automated on off wall, which is used in the safety instrumented system application. Similar type of walls are used in the BPCS applications as well. But uh, the safety uh, related testing requirements, proof test requ requirements, and all will not be as stringent as this. Okay, uh, we have the air supply coming uh, into your filter regulator, which uh, observes any moisture in the air and it is going through a three-way solenoid valve which is the one either passing the instrument air to the actuator, actuator body the air gets into the actuator body it works against the spring pressure to push it down and thereby opening the valve and whenever any emergency situation arises any hazard arises that time the solenoid valve port will move in such a way that the air will be vented out instead of it, it will be vented out through the vent port instead of going getting into the um, you think so the air in this chamber will get out through this vent and thereby uh, the spring will act with its force to close the valve this is a typical one of all assembly and its components in some cases there may be many components like um, volume booster and uh, in some cases some air receiver tank capacity of the actuator uh, is huge there could be some uh, volume booster and uh, receiver air receiver otherwise these are all the general components additionally we have these are all pneumatic related components additionally we have the limit switch for the valves and uh, positioner in some cases like this other components will be there Okay, basics of cis final elements on F valves. There are many different types of valves used in the safety instrumented system. Typical valve types include ball, butterfly. In butterfly, we have the double, triple offset butterfly valves. Here we are seeing two different pictures. One is a ball valve fitted with an actuator. It is connected to the process piping. It is having a yeah, multiple uh, pneumatic assembly like solenoid valve, instrument air filter regulator, etc. Like we saw in the previous picture, it is mounted with an actuator, double acting actuator, which, uh, which enables to open and close the valve. And in the bottom part, we have the butterfly valve shown with an actuator. It's a disc, a butterfly disc, which will move against the pneumatic force. There are many different type of actuators. They are defined by their power source and range of motion. Actuators typically use electric, hydraulic or pneumatic power sources. There could be electric, uh, electrically operated actuator. There could be hydraulic as well as pneumatic power sources. But uh, across the process industry, uh, in many applications, we could see only pneumatic actuators which is more reliable and quick action. All of these different designs have different performance characteristics 
different failure rates and different failure modes these are the internal characteristics of each components based on which uh, the safety manual what we discussed in earlier topic in the safety manual the failure rates and the failure modes of each components will be listed by the respective manufacturer there are other devices also in the sys final control elements and other types of safety instrumented system devices include simple devices like relays motor controllers as a final element in machine control applications the final element may be a motor controller in rare cases other devices have been used as final elements in safety instrumented functions such as annunciation devices like horns flashing lights or sirens in safety functions most of these uh, will be in the fire protection systems this will be simple like a relay which gets power from the digital output model for the safety instrumented system this is about the typical safety instrumented system final control element usage this is the data from the 2020 figures here we are seeing the percentage of uh, uh, different type of safety in this uh, final control elements being used across the industry uh, across the globe this is around 92 uh, percent see this particular type of device which is a on off valves automated on off valves this is around 92 percent being used across the industries and uh, electrical lace usage is around five percentage and motor controllers is around two percentage unknown station horn bulb siren doll less than one percentage so this is the typical data collected by the UKHSE department. Critical requirements of on off valves used in the safety instrumented system. Safety instrumented system final control elements. Valves to be selected carefully considering the valve type, materials, fluid challenges such as particulate, corrosion, erosion, cavitation, noise, etc and ensure the valve is cis capable as per the cis design we had uh, talked about it in earlier slides also when we talked about the safety instrumented system sensor chemical process which is used in the process characteristics may be erosion nature which can impinge to the valve body there is a possibility of erosion or cavitation which uh, which may impact the performance of the safety instrumented system valves or some devices some chemical compounds may have solid materials in it which can also cause the performance to get affected so that uh, with the particular type of design with that uh, particular process for the particular type of design has to be selected during the initial engineering phase valves used in seat leakage class 6 shall meet api 598 and ANSI FCA 70-2 requirements. This is a wall seat leakage requirement class which is uh, decided by the certifying bodies or international agencies uh, API and ANSI. So whenever the valve used in class 6, only in uh, many applications in the uh, industries, chemical industries, oil and gas industries, the requirements may be very stringent. The valve has to have a very tight shut off whenever it is closed it should not pass the gas or uh, fluid which is entering into it so this is known as tight shut of class and it is a class 6 requirement as per the IPA 598 we will understand it whenever we go into the detailed application requirements of valves a partial stroke test device can be used to extend the time between foolproof tests it can identify many failure modes but it cannot identify everything that a full stroke proof test would capture. Partial stroke test device is an additional component in the pneumatic assembly which is not installed in every valve. Based on the process requirement, some of the valves cannot be stroke checked because either it is a single valve in the particular piping and doesn't have a standby valve to support. So, in such circumstances or uh, the system may not be possible to be isolated while the process is in running condition. In such cases, we may go in for partial stroke test device which is an additional component uh, that gets a signal from the control system, SIS system which can slightly move the wall. It will not move the wall completely, it will move less than 
5 to 10 percent to ensure that the wall functionality is working good because as we all know proof test requirement is very stringent for the safety instrumented system final control elements in some cases according to the process requirements stroke testing may not be possible in such cases partial stroke test device shall help another uh, one which is a digital valve controller digital valve controller bore view digital valve controllers can perform safety functions capture demand stroke time a great tool for partial valve stroke tests using these devices allows a partial valve stroke test to be scheduled as frequently as required hidden failures such as sticky movement and friction talk changes due to process build up easy to identify digital valve controller is an additional device which can give a command to the partial stroke test device itself to move the valve partially in addition the ability to monitor solenoid valve health has greatly improved safety loop diagnostics and reliability the digital valve controller can check the healthiness of the solenoid valve also the solenoid valve is the critical component of an automated on off valve a test function properly so functionality also can be monitored using the digital valve controller both solenoid operated valve and digital valve controllers are powered separately an advantage of this shift loop compared to the earlier switch is the redundant shutdown provided by the digital valve controller sys final elements there may be some drawbacks using the sys final elements nuisance or spurious trips which can result in an unplanned process or planned shutdown there could be some unwanted trips which could have been avoided this is due to failure of some components this is a routine trouble with uh, some maintenance being not done or the components getting aged and getting wear and tear etc although a spurious trip is a safe for the plant and personnel the financial impact due to loss of production is substantial the spurious trip on one hand it will improve the safety of the overall plant and it can protect the personal equipment and uh, the environment surrounding not to go for any hazard conditions but on the other hand whenever uh, any spurious trip happens and the plant or part, part of the plant becomes shut down that production is getting affected thereby loss of uh, production there's a financial burden covered hard hidden failures remain undetected and permit normal process conditions this failure type is dangerous and contributes to the probability of system failing on demand the testing shift loop is therefore crucial in uncovering the covered failures this is one type of failures so the proof testing can improve to um, avoid this one if the valve and all related components are certified seal capable that does not guarantee with the valve meeting the intent normally whenever we go with the sys design for selecting the valve engineering contractor will try to select the valve with the seal capability but having a seal capability for the valve does not guarantee that it will work as per the intent often there is a different supplier for each component because the valve actuator or positioner plus an integrator an integrator means the company which assembles the valve with the actuator to put it all together the integrator is the one who is doing the assembly of the valve with actuator with uh, different pneumatic components like instrument air regulator um, solenoid valve booster release volume boosters like that so uh, the integrator is the one he is uh, getting a uh, valve from one manufacturer actuator from a different manufacturer and the pneumatic components and the tubing from another manufacturers and he is making the assembly together and supplying to the end user so um, these components have been procured from different suppliers and assembled at one facility at an integrated facility so there could be some chances that even though the valves having such certification so this uh, there is a possibility of getting into an error but it is not a it's not that every time it can happen but the probability is high so it is always better to go with one manufacturer who is doing the 
valve and actuator either uh, they are manufacturing the actuator by themselves or getting it from the uh, from the reputed manufacturer and assembling it testing and selling to the end user integrator uh, is one who is getting the materials from different manufacturers and assembling it together they don't take the complete responsibility whenever any failure is happening so these are all the few concerns uh, so whenever we do the engineering whenever the cisselated valves is being procured proper care has to be taken thank you